Like and subscribe right now or you're going to have bad luck for the rest of the week. There's certainly a lot of strange, eccentric, and even ludicrous fashion trends out there nowadays. From Lady Gaga wearing a meat dress to the MTV Music Awards, or Miley Cyrus dancing on stage in a diaper. Of course, the most out there fashion trends are usually kept to fashion events, and artists who want to shock and stun audiences with their unusual appearances. It's safe to assume that the public generally doesn't dress in the manner they do. However, there have been numerous and recurring times throughout history when dominant fashion trends in Europe and the United States were embraced and imitated by large swaths of the world. For whatever reason. Most fashion is harmless if just a little bit odd. But the trends we'll be talking about in this video weren't practical at all. From forcing people to walk weirdly to preventing them from sitting down at all, people still decided the fashions were worthy to wear. We look back and ask, why? But at the time, as with today, people wanted to wear what was in. But hey, quite a few of today's fashions are wittingly or not inspired by trends even from hundreds of years ago. Number 13. Hoop Skirts the hoop skirt is a broad, typically circular-shaped, cone-like structure women wore under their dresses that caused the dress to expand out around them. Hoop skirts are most commonly associated with the Victorian and antebellum time periods, or 1700s to 1800s. However, this particular piece of fashion has been around since the 1600s. Through the centuries, they've changed in width and shape per period preference. Farthingales, one of the earliest forms of the hoop skirt, were popular throughout Europe, with variants coming from France, Spain, and Italy. This particular hoop skirt was designed to accentuate the hips by being flat at the top and expanding out left and right, creating a form that was desired by ladies of the period. Reeds, whalebone, metal rods, and canvas were among some of the materials used to construct farthingales. All forms of hoop skirts through these time periods were quite cumbersome for women to deal with. And let's not even talk about if any of them could sit easily, or in some instances, at all. Also, some were hazardous. A young woman in Boston died in 1858 after her big skirt, also called a crinoline, caught fire from ashes from a fireplace in her parlor. Over a two-month period, there were 19 similar fatalities. Number 12. The Hobble Skirt It's important to remember that some clothing period trends don't come back and for good reason. One such product is the hobble skirt, a piece of clothing from the Edwardian era. For a while, history refused to resurrect it, but nowadays, in some circles, the restrictive skirt has returned. The hobble skirt is designed to be so tight around the lower legs and ankles that it caused women to hobble, hampering their ability to walk when they wore it. Although great fashion designer Paul Poiret is credited with coming up with the hobble skirt, no one knows for sure when this dreadful fad originally debuted. Just that it was in the early 1900s and, thank goodness, gave way to flapper fashion. Number 11. Male Corsets Men wearing corsets is actually nothing new. Numerous famous men throughout history have worn corsets or corset-like clothing for medicinal or aesthetic reasons. Such reasons in the 19th century include improving appropriate upper body posture when riding a horse, assisting troops to fit into their clothes, protecting the spine if they were thrown off, and even to aid in keeping organs in place if the man had been injured. On that note, male corsets also kept the warrior's kidneys from bruising as they galloped ahead. Yet, male corsets fell out of favor in the 1900s and remained as a part of subculture. That is, until they were revived by Dior in the 1950s as part of his new look fashion. Number 10. Bloomers Bloomers are no exception to the rule that fashion may be utilized to make political statements. Just as women today may use bras to make statements, bloomers, or Turkish pantaloons, were worn by women's rights campaigners in the 1850s as part of a larger movement aimed to liberate the average woman. They used bloomers in this manner as the clothing was seen as a degradation of common decency and a threat to the male-dominated Victorian culture. In the end, Turkish pantaloons only lasted a few seasons. Number 9. Prakuz. In the late 14th century, this extraordinarily long shoe, also known as the poulain, was all the rage among men all throughout Europe. As the shoe was introduced to England by the Polish aristocracy, the shoes were named after Kraku Poland. Despite the shoes ranging from 15 to 61 centimeters, 
or 6 to 24 inches long, they shot up in popularity after being seen in court, and they served as a prominent sign of one's social standing. The longer the shoe, the greater the wearer's position. But these shoes weren't practical, so chains were occasionally linked from the toe of the shoe to the wearer's knee so they could walk. For the same purpose, the shoes were, at times, packed with material. Many conservatives and religious leaders thought they were foolish, egotistical, and dangerous, referring to them as devil's fingers. Number 8. Panniers During the 17th and 18th centuries, panniers, from the French word panier, which means basket, were quite popular. Unlike hoop skirts which run from the hips to the feet, panniers were broad-shaped pieces of stiff fabric that only attached at the hips and extended left and right. The box-shaped petticoat widened skirts and dresses and was visible on both sides of the waistband. But, like hoop skirts, panniers came in a variety of sizes and materials including whalebone, wood, metal, and reeds. Extremely big panniers were reserved for special events and served as a reflection of the wearer's social standing. Smaller ones were worn by the servants. To put this into perspective, panniers could be so wide that two noblewomen couldn't fit through a door or sit on a couch at the same time. Least to say, panniers weren't merely inconvenient, they limited movement and activity for the wearer. Number 7. Bustles the Victorian bustle, often known as the Grecian Bend, first appeared in the 1870s, perhaps as a successor to the hoop skirt or pannier. Excess fabric was collected and hung at the back of the women's dress over her behind in the first evolution of this fashion. That doesn't sound too inconvenient, until the skirts were eventually blown up with huge pillows filled with straw. This resulted in a highly exaggerated form at the back for the women who wore them. Guess that was the preferred shape of the time. Number 6. Lotus Shoes For millennia in China, very small feet on women was seen as the height of femininity and social status. Therefore, wealthy Chinese families would break and fold their young girls' feet and wrap them in lengthy ribbons to prevent the feet from growing naturally, even better if the toes withered and fell off. The procedure took two to three years on average, with the girl's feet having to be bound for the remainder of her life. Lotus shoes, cone or sheath-shaped footwear that resembled a lotus bloom, were then worn by women with wrapped feet. They were usually beautiful shoes, decorative, embroidered with flowers, animals, and other traditional motifs, and were made of silk or cotton. Throughout Chinese history, there have been several attempts to ban the practice, but only in 1912 was it formally forbidden. Yet, for some years after, the practice was secretly continued in some parts of China. Number 5. Chopines Chopines were the first platform shoes. They were worn by aristocrats from the 15th to 17th centuries to give them a height edge over their contemporaries. The higher the chopine, the higher the wearer's position, supposedly. There was a practical purpose, though, too, to keep the wearer's actual shoes clean in the mud. To make chopines, silk or velvet shoes are sewn onto wooden or cork blocks that may or may not match the slipper. Chopines were difficult to wear and, honestly, ridiculous in appearance. But the chopines' elevated platform would eventually give rise to the wedge so it shouldn't be surprising they existed so long ago. Number 4. Bliutes We've all seen bliutes in medieval historical films. These are extremely long sleeves that can reach to the floor, purposefully meant to limit the wearer's hand movements. As with many other impractical fashions in this video, the bliute was meant to denote the wearer's upper-class rank, since nobility didn't need to engage in anything but idle domestic occupations, such as knitting, embroidery, or praying. Despite the impracticality, this inconvenient garment became very fashionable among the top crust of medieval French society. Number 3. Zebellinis The wealthiest members of society, think kings, queens, and members of the royal court, were enamored with zebellinis centuries ago. Also known as flea furs or tippets, zebellinis were usually made from the actual pelts of ermine, sable, marten, or lynx, and were worn with the head attached. This repulsive custom served as a symbol of prestige, demonstrating one's place in the social hierarchy and food chain. At least by the 16th century, most pelts were false, and the heads were replaced with bogus exaggerated ones. Number 2. The Tudor Ruff While modified versions of the Tudor Ruff can occasionally be seen on today's runways, the original was layered, stifling, and massive. 
This Elizabethan relic became popular during Elizabeth I's reign, when she preferred versions made of pricey fine linen. It was exceedingly bulky and uncomfortable to wear, especially because more dramatic versions required metal suspension lines to hold the ruffs puffed up. Number 1. Paper Dress during the 1960s, what began as a marketing campaign for a paper business turned into a fashion trend. The paper dress, literally just paper, was generally decorated with colorful geometric designs. It was a huge hit. But as it was made of paper, it wasn't a long-term investment. A woman could only wear it one time before it ripped up and ended up in the trash. Talk about fast fashion. That is all for today's video. Thank you all for watching. While you're here, go ahead and click on one of these two videos on your screen. See you there.